Hello, BookTube. Um, this is Josh's game book tag. Um, a foodie tag. It's his 19th. Um, he's done 20 now. So I, he tagged me in this, and I appreciate that very much. And I think uh, um, I struggle with a bit of this one. This one's very uh, complex. Um, so finding the books to go with the prompts was a bit of a challenge. Which, again, like I say, is, and I've said in other tags, that that's a good thing. Uh, if you hear any noise in the background, my littlest one had to stay home from school today. So he's got YouTube going downstairs. So something called Yokai Watch, if you know what that is. So uh, without further ado, let's get into the tag. Um, so game... Um, Josh decided to create a tag that revolves around animals that are or <clears throat> have been hunted and creates questions of that nature. This is not for the sensitive. Okay. So, uh, the first prompt he provides is alligator. Fill in the blanks. If you like this well-known writer, you will like that lesser-known writer. So, for this, I chose, if you know Dan Brown, uh, the Da Vinci Code, and you liked it, you can see some of my other choices there, right? Then you might like The Righteous Men by Sam Bourne. So, um, a teenage computer prodigy is mortally strangled in Mumbai. A far-right extremist is killed in a remote cabin in the Pacific Northwest. A wealthy businessman is murdered in Thailand. A pimp in Brooklyn is found stabbed to death and mysteriously covered by a brown shroud. What connects the victims is an ancient prophecy that leads to the end of the world. And it's up to Will Monroe, a fledgling reporter at the New York Times, to stop it. So, um, to keep it brief, that's, that's that comparison. So, um, number two is Turtle, a work that was incredibly slow. Now, for that, I chose this one. This is uh, Timothy Zahn, who I really, really like, and this was a good book. Uh, the Star Wars Scoundrels. And like I say, I enjoyed it. Great cover, by the way. Isn't that neat? See, wow, well, there's going to be a little glare. I apologize. I don't make it like that. Um, I did think it took a while to develop. Um, and it, 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 that was necessary for the story, but it, it, it was incredibly slow to develop. Number three, pheasant, a lesser known work you feel that needs to be mass produced. And for that, I picked um, James L. Nelson uh, by Force of Arms. It's the first in a series called The Revolution at Sea. And um, this is what it looks like. I don't, I don't even believe these are in print anymore. They may be. Um, the uh, tradition of Patrick O'Brien's epics is carried on gloriously in this first novel of a new historical naval adventure trilogy, Revolution at Sea, blending a seasoned mariner's expertise, and Nelson is that, a historian's attention to period detail, and he's written a lot of histories, and a natural storyteller's gift for creating a cast of vivid characters. Um, so uh, this is all... American War for Independence, nautical fiction, wonderful stuff if you're into that sort of thing. And I'd love to see it get a new printing and some promotion because it's really good stuff. Okay, Partridge, a work that you can you feel can never have a sequel. I don't have a copy anymore. I hate to think of how many times I've owned it over the years. But for me, that would be Peter Benchley's Jaws. Um, Quail. A work that is required that you read every single word in detail. And for me, it's this. Arturo Perez Reverte, The Club du Mans. Um, excellent. Excellent writer. Um, and excellent, uh, excellent story here. So, Lucas Corso is searching for the original of The Book of the Nine Doors of the Kingdom of Darkness, which supposedly came, contains a secret to summoning the devil. It is said that only one copy survived the Inquisitions. 
How is it then that Corso has tracked down three authenticated copies? Who is the beautiful woman, named after an Arthur Conan Doyle character, following him? Is she a threat, a protector, or a love interest? What ensues is a search that takes Corso from Madrid to Paris and brings him into a world of a secret society of antiquarians, the occult, 19th century popular literature, fictional and historical characters, all brought to a startling and unforgettable conclusion. So Corso was a mercenary of the book world, hunting down books for other people. Jackals on the scent of a Gutenberg Bible, antique fair sharks, auction room leeches. They would sell their grandmothers for first edition. This book is really cool. It's, uh, uh, has, it's a novel, but it has all these clues and uh, bookish stuff. Uh, yeah, good literary thriller, I guess you'd call it. Um, but there's a lot of clues in there. You, you have to follow it. Um, Duck, a work you decided to read because you became caught up in a great deal of hype to do so. And that was this, Brandon Sanderson's uh, The Way of Kings, uh, book one of the Stormlight Archive. Saw it on booktube constantly. And finally just said, I've got to read this thing. And I'm, I haven't read the other ones, the follow-up volumes, but I did read this and enjoyed it very much. So I will get to the others. Okay. Number seven, Goose. A work that becomes better through discussion or one's response to the text. For that, I chose Macbeth. And I could have cho uh, chosen Richard III. I could have any, well, most of the plays. We read... Uh, Shakespeare plays every year as a group at the library and pick different play and the discussion and we reread the parts and then we have tons of discussions and it's one of the great one of the fun things we do at the library that I love and the discussion does help I, I love it very much okay number eight dear a great work you thought was a bit short or very lean I had a little trouble with this, um, but I love this book, An, Un uh, An Uncommon Reader by Alan Bennett, and I chose it because it's short, but it's actually the size and the length it should be. It's, it's exactly right. So, um, when her corgis stray into a mobile library parked near Buckingham Palace, the queen feels duty-bound to borrow a book. Discovering the joy of reading widely... Uh, and intelligently, she finds that her view of the world changes dramatically. Abetted in her newfound obsession by Norman, a young man from the royal kitchens, the queen comes to question the prescribed order of the world and loses patience with the routines of her role as monarch. Her, her new passion for reading initially alarms the palace staff and soon leads to a surprising and very funny consequences for the country at large. And this is a fun little book. So let's move on here. Bison, a work where you feel the characters set themselves up for trouble. <clears throat> and it's intentional in this case. It's a wonderful book. Tactics of Mistake, Gordon R. Dixon. Right here. So we have uh, Donald Graham, iconoclastic ex Terran military officer, and his revolutionary new theories of taxes and training are they valid? And the Dorsai, that world of stateless soldiers of fortune who sold their lives in foreign wars to feed their families, seemed to be the ideal testing ground. But if Donald Graham was wrong, if his theories were flawed and the Dorsai lacked a spark of greatness he thought he saw in them, then he was a dead man. For if he failed, he would make a blood enemy of the most powerful planet in human space. That blurb's not really good. but um, This is one of the Dorsai novels. And I'm going to track down the rest of them. I've read a short story, and then I've read this. Um, loved them both. Um, basically, this guy who has a theory about military theories has, um, and that he wants to test out does it on a very real scale. And if it works, 
that'll be one thing, and if it doesn't, that'll be another. So it's military sci-fi, and this guy puts himself right in the midst of things. So if he's wrong, he probably's not going to make it out. Um, let's see, Elk. A big wholesome book you would recommend. Well, this summer I have a sixty-year-old son. This summer, this past summer, I think I read all the Winnie the Pooh maybe nine times. So, as the overall collected works, I would say is a big wholesome book, which I basically memorized by now. But lo they're fun. He loved them. Uh, but a bit. Uh, uh, a uh, squirrel, a short work or poem with great depth. That would be this, which I also recently read. No, this glare is terrible, isn't it? Ursula, Ursula K. Le Guin, The Word for World is Forest. Um, absolutely love this book. Um... Let me give you a little read-up on it. When the inhabitants of a peaceful world are conquered by the bloodthirsty humans, their existence is irrevocably altered. Forced into servitude, the Athshins find themselves at the mercy of their brutal masters. Desperation causes the Athshins, led by Selver, to retaliate against their captors, abandoning the strictures against violence. But in defending their lives, they have endangered the very foundations of their society. For every blow against the invaders is a blow to the humanity of the uh, Athians. And once the killing starts, there's no turning back. She can write. She, she was just amazing. Um, I just reread Wizard of... I'm pointing to it. You can't see it. I uh, reread The Wizard of Earthsea, the first novel in her ongoing work, and it was... It was better than the first time around. I really enjoyed it. And so this next one, uh, this was really an interesting one, Rabbit. A work with a cute title or cover, but an ugly and or gruesome plot. I struggle. I've got a lot of books in this house, and I couldn't, for the life of me, figure out how to answer this one. But eventually, because of the word game, I figured that was cute or fun or disarming or something. So I picked Game of Thrones. I don't know if any of you have seen the... Uh, there's an there's image that you can find on Pinterest where somebody went through and used those little posty things, little stickery things, and marked in a pile of all of the ones in the series, uh, places where people were killed, and it was an amazing image, it just loaded. This, this book's full of violence, uh, but I enjoyed it very much. So let's see, Whale, a huge book that took a great deal of effort to read and left you exhausted, and I am sure I will not be the only one who answers this question about the whale, with the whale. Which I have reread more than once. There's parts of it I really, really like. Um, there's uh, parts of it that just are uncomfortable or flabbergasting or bizarre. Um, the jury's out on this one. Um, there's times when I understand why people think it's a great book, and there's times when I just think, well, it's not for me right now. So, uh, well, the jury isn't out. It's already been decided that it's a great book. But um, for me, it, it's a struggle. Okay. 14, Fishing Instead. A work to help you change a habit or way of living. For someone of my age, um, who was a young man when the original series of Star Trek came out, it would have been the philosophy embedded in Star Trek. Uh, the books came out later, obviously, but it seemed to be the best answer. Fictional characters. Um, a way of seeing the world. And uh, I would say for sure 
uh, that would that would be it for me. Um, it's always always it had an impact on my philosophy of life. So number fifteen. Um, what is your position on hunting? If favorable, what is your favorite kind of game? Well, I I have spent my life in a rural area uh, that's woods and farms. Um, my family's been in this part of Vermont, or some part of Vermont, for literally centuries as farmers. And they hunted. And when I was a young fella, I hunted too. The notion of farm to table and stuff like that would have meant nothing to my ancestors or any of my immediate family because that's the only kind of food and the only kind of living they knew. Um, so living here, there's a connection with that sort of thing. Um, I, my father quit hunting when I was young. Um, he just decided he didn't want to do it anymore. Um, but he did fish. I quit hunting decades and decades ago. It just wasn't my thing. But I do fish. I like to go fishing. Um, many, many of my friends hunt. They're wonderful people. Uh, responsible. They teach their children to hunt. Um, so I, I'm not anti-hunting in the least. Um, human beings have been hunting since there have been human beings. And when you live out here, you see other animals hunting, and it can be pretty brutal. But uh, it's not for me. I, I don't do it. Um, but like I say, my, many of my friends and family do. So uh, my opinion on hunting is that it's, it's part of life. Um, my favorite kind of game... I've had a lot. Moose, I've had venison, uh, bear. Um, I would say done right, probably venison. And then uh, hunting trip, who do you tag? Well, because I think this one could be a little controversial or uncomfortable for people, I'm not going to tag anybody. Josh tagged quite a few. Um, some of them will have very different opinions than mine, I'm sure. But um, it was a very, in, in a book perspective, it was a very, very challenging tag. And um, so I appreciate those of you who made it all the way through for doing so. And thank you, book two.